Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gamers. If you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus: Jorgen's Path. So the last place we left off, we had we had just gone outside with uh, with Lake. I think we we're going on a little walk with the guy. I'm hoping we see more Jorgen soon. Um, this is really more of a lake run. Um, yeah, Jorgen. Jorgen seems like a tougher nut to crack. He's very, very introverted, which means that it's, we're having a bit of difficulty just reaching inside and grabbing all them emotions and such. But anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it and see if we can get a little bit more love out of that bado, shall we? All right, alarm chain, you're up. All right, sit back and enjoy the crunchy. God, I forgot they were walking, literally walking. Okay. <clears throat> Not who, but what? It's a film. Oh, the film was called Him, I think. Yep. Oh, what about? I don't want to tell Lake, especially seeing him walk around in his final shirt only, but the cold is getting to me, and I'm not really up for anywhere ambitious conversations. It's sort of a sci-fi romance, but not really. A guy fresh out of a divorce downloads a new operating, a new AI operating system and falls in love with it. I still need to see that. That sounds kind of stupid, but does it really? I can imagine that happening. People seem to be getting lonelier and lonelier, and contact between us seem to get more and more virtual. Maybe it is the future. Though maybe it isn't. It's really well done. I like it because it's the warmest film I know. I was listening to a track from the soundtrack on my way here, and I've been thinking of it since then. I feel like I need this film in my life right now. I haven't seen it, so there's not much I can say in reply to that, but it's good to know that Lake listens to some music after all. Suddenly, one of the guest house windows open for, opens for a brief moment, and out of it, a high, at a high velocity, flies a phone. It hits the ground with a muted thud, leaving a hollow, leaving a hollow in the snow cover. What the hell was that? Hey, Lake, wasn't that your window? Oh, damn, what the hell is going on there? Should we go check? Lake leans and picks up, up, picks up the phone from the snow. It's Jorgen's. We should definitely go check. Without a glance behind, Lake walks off to the entrance, and I follow his steps. Yeah, not everything's as it should be. She can take her stupid messages and shove them up her fat, spoiled, furry ass. Despite the closed door, we can hear Jorgen loud and clear. D do you think it's safe to go inside? I, I hope. I don't think I've ever heard him this mad, though. Okay, well, you go in first. Me? Why me? Because it's your room and your friend, damn it! Uh, right. Okay, uh, g give me a moment. Hey, Gudrun. We enter the room and see not only Jorgen, but also a lamb I have not, I have, I haven't met yet. Wow, she's really tall. It looks like they're having a heated discussion, but stop as soon as we enter. Hello, I don't think it's a good time for a visit. Could you give us a moment? No, no need to. You can stay. That's Carvin. They're a friend. Carvin, this is Gudrun. My pleasure to meet you. Likewise. I got your phone here, Jorgen. Just put it anywhere. I don't even want to see it now. Is everything all right? Well, no. Not really. Jorgen sighs and deflates, his shoulders dropping a notch. I got a message from someone that used to be close to me. We were in the same class in high school, but grew apart after it. She was fine with me being an edgy punk at the start of the school, but apparently Tripp's subculture with all their positivity and openness was too much for her. So imagine that this asshole had the nerve to drop me a message persuading me to change my mind about transitioning. And yeah, love this, yeah, love the adristic. Thank God that ship has sailed. I never thought I'd get to see Jorgen angry, let alone this mad. Though, hearing the story, not without good reason. Ellie asked her where she got my number, and then blocked her. And imagine that, of course my caring parents asked her to do that. Jorgen starts to tiptoe around in a tiny circle, his jaw clenched and paws curled into fists. I messaged him what the fuck they were thinking, and my father replied that he wants to have the daughter he loves back. Well, guess what? She never existed in the first place. I just threw the phone at the window before I wrote something I could regret later, but, it, but wrote to Gudrun to come before that. Jorgen's words ring in my ears. What the hell is this fucked up situation? That's really harsh. I'm sorry, Jorgen. Family should be the safe space where you always feel welcome. I could always count on mine, even if we aren't very close anymore. Still, I know I have some place to go if things go wrong. It's hard for me to imagine not having that. It's fine. We never... It's fine. We never really understood each other. I don't think we've ever been a happy family. They're conservative and with an aggressively middle-class mentality. 
the same kind of people who gave rise to fascism. They always tried to imbue that rigid system of values into me, and I never liked that. I'm fine without them. I don't live with them, I don't talk with them, I don't really care about them either. I just wish they would stop trying to reach me. I want to hug the poor bat, but I don't think he'd appreciate that. He doesn't seem like the type to enjoy physical contact. Well, maybe they have good intentions and care about you, but they're just bad at showing that? Enskatan! The hell with their good intentions! If they care about their own illusionary, illusionary world more than about their own child, they deserve no good word. I see what you mean, but to write off your family like that? No matter what they did. You know, I can't really sympathize with the organ. I know, sorry, I guess I would have been too far. I know it's not easy for you to know, for you, for you either. Okay, I clearly lack a lot of context in this conversation. Maybe I really should leave after all. But believe me, I feel like I have no family, or worse, that I have stalkers I cannot get rid of. All I asked for was a quiet acceptance, and they kept pestering me. They don't even know I have undergone my transition already. Why do you still talk with them, then? I like to just say fuck it and erase them from my life. But yeah, as you said, Lake. They are my family. Even though they weren't there for me, even though they keep letting me down, I can't help but feel something towards them. It's like a gravitational pull. I don't know how to fight it. Maybe you shouldn't. They might just need more time to adjust to the situation, and they'll accept it eventually. By pushing them away, you're stripping them from that chance. And from what I know, they didn't push you away. Maybe, but do they really want what's best for him? Or they only care about their own comfort? Jorgen shouldn't have to go through this period. Is there any way we can help you? I don't know. I don't think so. But I feel like I've come to a point when I have to make a decision. What do you think, Carvin? You're the only impartial one here. Me? Why me? I don't know why I would be more impartial than Lake or Gudrun, or why my opinion should matter at all. But out of all of you, I'm the least familiar with the situation. Still, I'd like to know what you think of all this. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go with Jorgen on this one, cut ties, even though I strongly side with Lake on this. I really, really, really think they should just be given more time to cool off and it ho hopefully eventually accept what's happened because a lot of people, they don't understand, tra they don't understand transitioning. Like, it, they just, it's out of their head. Like, they have no idea how to think about, how to think or feel about it. And, you know, for a while, I didn't, I didn't understand, I didn't understand trans people, you know, and I didn't really get it, but, like, time and experience and actually being friends with a, quite a few trans people has, you know, has taught me that, uh, who we are is very, very complicated, and changing your, your gender or your sex really probably shouldn't be that big of a damn deal. Because you're still you deep down. And in truth, that's probably who you've always been. But anyway, I'm getting off tie here. Okay, off, off track here. Cut ties. The more I think it over in my head, the more obvious it seems. I can plainly see that Jorgen is hurting and he doesn't deserve that. Not this pain, nor this treatment he's getting, especially from his family. The ones who should be there for him. What kind of family is that if they hurt him like this? They must be aware of what they are doing. I get that they're communicating their own pain, but it only adds to the insult. It's as if it's as if it was Jorgen's fault, as if he was willfully inflicting this pain on them. They're doing this to themselves. I shudder. I haven't come out to my parents, but if they told me they want they want the straight son they knew back, what would I do? I think I would slam the door and never come back. They don't deserve you. Tears well up in my eyes. Jorgen's eyes are fixed on me. It feels like he's looking straight through my eyes and right into my soul. I want to turn around and leave, lie down on my bed and stay there for a long time. But instead, I speak, my, I speak, my voice getting louder and louder. You don't have to put up with this. They might come around, or they might, na or they might not, but you don't deserve the pain they inflict on you in the meantime. They're not your family if they don't see that. If they don't see what they're doing is fucked up. They can't tell you this shit and then expect you to, never, to, and expect you to ever talk with them again. You're right, they don't care about you, they care about some illusion they created. I don't feel good, I want to punch someone. And so what? You don't, you don't need them to be happy. Chosen family is better than the biological one. People who actually are there for you and care about you. That's more important than blood ties could ever be. A slight nod. Thank you. Jorgen closes his eyes and takes a deep breath. 
I need some time to process all this. I'm going for a swim. You're free to join me if you want. I don't mind the company. I likely won't be the only one there anyway. I'll pass. I don't feel like doing anything. I'll just wait for dinner here. Already hungry again. Really? Hey, unlike you, I've had some exercise today already. I wouldn't count that walk. We were out for, what, five minutes, maybe? And napping isn't an exercise. Hey, it burns calories. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not doing any activity before I get some food. Well, I have apples if you want some. I'll pass. Well, have fun. We're going. Ah, here we go! Yes! I'd hoped to walk at least a few kilometers into town today, but a swim instead might also be nice. I think I'll join you. I can use some physical activity before dinner. Just give me a moment, I'll go grab my swimming shorts. Okay, we'll wait in the corridor. I take the swimming shorts and towel from my room, closing the door to my room and turning the key in the lock. I notice my paws are shaking. Okay, I'm ready. Jorgen nods and heads down the stairs. Me and Gudrun start walking to follow him and end up bumping into each other. She's lighter than I thought, considering her height, and just bounces off me. Oh, terribly sorry! She eyes me curiously again, as if she just remembered I'm here. It's fine. Please, remind me. Your name is Carvin, right? That's right. Sorry, that was a heated moment. Not the best occasion for a first meeting. Yeah, I got furious just listening to this. Hey, are you, hey, are you going or not? Yeah, going. <laughs> going, going, gone. Jorgen is walking ahead of us, at faster than his usual stoic pace, keeping distance. I really feel sorry for him. I can't offer any comfort other than my words in my company now, though. So, you're a friend of Jorgen. How did you two meet? Very recently, actually. I'd met him on this camp through Lake, whom I know from my dormitory. And how do you know him? You're studying on the same course? Oh no, I'm on neurobiology. I met Jorgen maybe two years ago at the concert in Anslo. That was in one of the club cafe hybrids that are so popular lately. We saw Mountain Candy playing their, la their latest album, plus some new material. That was one heavy concert. We both went to talk to Phil, the musician behind the project, after the concert concluded. He wasn't in a mood for conversation, though, so we just bought, just bought some merchandise from him. I was sure Jorgen. I was sure I saw Jorgen before already, so I introduced myself and asked him about that. It turned out that he played at the same venue a week earlier as a part of a harsh, a harsh noise project, and I attended that concert. Oh, I didn't know he plays any instruments. He never mentioned anything about that. He didn't even talk much about music. I thought it's not something he's interested in. I don't. I scream into a microphone. I would rather call these visceral shrieks. He's a true feral beast. Oh. Into some heavy metal, are we? Yeah, I see. Anyway, yes, that's how I first met him. When he was screaming his lungs out wearing a black druid robe and his face painted all white. That doesn't fit my image of Jorgen at all. I've only seen him as a stoic collected bat even during this whole situation with his parents. We stop in front of the door to the locker rooms. I guess we're splitting here? Yes, but I'm going back to my room. Aw, oh, you're not joining us? Not really a fan of swimming, sorry. If I don't wash out very thoroughly, I smell like a dead sea for the rest of the day. Drying after it always takes ages, too. This is what you get for having fur this fabulous. Well, thank you. Anyway, we have a dinner in a short while. I'm not up for this whole procedure before that. You want to join us for dinner? We have a double table at the end of the room. I think I could. Why not? My table isn't especially fascinating. So, see you later, Flappy. See ya, giant. <laughs> Flappy? Don't ask. <laughs> I love it. Aw, oh, too bad we're not gonna get to see Gudrun wearing a bikini or swimsuit. She's pretty cute. She's thick. I like thick. I like them big girls that can fucking choke me. Damn it! Okay, we're getting into weird territory here. <laughs> oh, Lady D. I seem to have fallen and can't get up. Oh, no! <laughs> We change into our swimwear in silence. I glance at Jorgen from time to time, still concerned about him. He didn't say much since we left the room, and I can see he's keeping more distance than usually. I thought he'd walk away into the shower area or hide behind the locker to change, but he didn't. He changed into his swimwear with the same expressionless face he had when we, were, when we were talking in the corridor. Maybe it shouldn't surprise me, but he has a very lithe build, even much more than Lake. He has short fur instead of a thick pelt, which makes him look even slimmer. He's the first one to finish changing, but leans on the locker and waits for me until I'm done too. I nod at him, closing my locker, and we start walking towards the swimming pool. There's nobody else but us here now. Looks like everyone is already getting ready for dinner. As soon as we enter, Jorgen runs off to the edge of the pool and jumps in. 
The jump is elegant and precise, and the water barely splashes. Jorgen submerges completely and then resurfaces a few meters further. Damn, he's good at that. I thought the wings would be a considerate setback, but he seems to be doing well despite them. Hey, wait for me! Heh. <laughs> I jump into the pool and start swimming after Jorgen. He's already at the other side when I reach him. He shoots me a smile before darting off again and I follow, trying to catch up with him. Cold water cools me off, and I swim as fast as I can until my lungs start burning, the chlorinated water washing all the tension away from my body. Ooh. Damn it! Ah! Oh, that was good. Ah. See you again. This month we have an update for Runes Rude. Next month we're back to Bjorn. Okay, alrighty. So Bear Boy is getting some more content. Alright! Damn. Ha, ah, that was good. I like how that looks like a puzzle. Alright, guys, this has been a slightly shorter uh, episode of Dawn Course, Jorgen's Path. So, um, if guys is. Um, is there anything else for me to do in this game? If you guys in the comments could answer, I, we may be done with Dawn Course for now. Man. A little over a year ago since my uh, werewolf boyfriend video blew up. It's still currently the most watched video on my channel. It's got like 10,000 views. It's crazy. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if we can go after Klaus. I'm kind of interested in that. I want to see the kind of creepy mystic. Woo, magic. I was waving my hands about if you couldn't see me. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!